In this video, we're going to look at the very basics of location-based augmented reality. This uses almost a completely different technology set to vision-based. So the scenario is that we have various points in the real world that we want to draw people's attention to. And we're going to use sensors within the phone. First of all, GPS sensors to identify the location of the person. And then sensors such as accelerometers and magnetometers to identify the orientation of the phone and the direction they're facing in. And that lets us filter out the points that we're not going to display and the ones we're interested in. We can add into the camera view and augment so they look like they're floating in 3D space. And in this case, the camera is almost passive. It's just there as a background almost to help us locate those 3D points. So we need a coordinate system. So we're going to use latitude and longitude. Positive latitude is above the equator. Negative latitude is below the equator. Positive longitude is to the east, the Greenwich Mean Line, and negative longitude to the west. So it's almost like XY coordinate. Um, but when we want to find those values, we can use Google Maps. First of all, make sure you're not in light mode by checking to see if there's that lightning bolt down in the bottom right hand corner. And when we're in full maps mode, if we right click anywhere, we should be able to choose what's here. And then we can get a latitude and longitude. Notice it's latitude first, which would normally be the Y coordinate, but they're just the other way around. So they're also handily in the decimal format, which we need. So just again, an example, right click what's here. There's our decimal latitude and longitude. But halfway down on the left, you can see there's a switch over as well. The degrees, minutes and arc seconds, I think, north and west. Uh, which we don't want. And again, if you're in light mode, right click what's here. It doesn't actually tell you the coordinate system. So if you've used Wikitude before, looked at any of the other videos, you'll recognize architect.js, which brings in the functionality, got an empty body in this case, and all our functionality is in the script. So the first thing we need to set up is what function is called when this on location changed event is fired. So the function that we've set up is just this one called location changed. And whenever the system deems it's appropriate to fire that event, to trigger that function, it supplies the latitude, longitude, altitude, and the accuracy that it thinks that has been measured to. So this part is fairly simple because it's only a few lines. We're going to load in an image file to appear. We need to identify a location Right, so we create ar.geolocation. I'm just using the latitude, longitude, and altitude supplied. So it's going to be based on wherever the observer is. I'm adding on 0 0.05 to latitude. So remember, latitude is vertical, so it's going to be due north of wherever they're standing. Then we create a image drawable based on the image resource. So you can set various parameters. In this case, just setting a size of 8. So at the bottom we have the thing that combines them all together where we create a geo object. So we need to supply the location that we've set previously and the thing that we want to display at that location, which is our image drawable. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. So as we hold up the device and pan it around, we can see the marker looking like it's floating in 3D space. What we're going to do now is look at some of the debugging options that we have in Wikitude, try and work out how many times that function is being called. So the first thing we need to do is to start the logging. So it's ar.logger activate debug mode. And this will add a small icon on the bottom right that will let us bring up a console that we can see our messages. So within the function, Every time that we're adding a marker, we're going to log that so we can see how many times we're doing it. So it's ar.logger.debug. So we've got four different options. We're going to use debug this time. We just pass in a string that we want to display. So let's see the effect of that. So there's the icon in the lower right. Click on that. Brings up the console with the four different categories. We're going to choose debug this time and have a look at how many messages we're getting. 
it's a little bit blurry. We can see they're coming up uh, every few seconds, almost every 10 seconds, I think it looks like. So obviously that's too many because every time it's fired, we're adding a new marker. So what's recommended in the sample code is to use a flag. In this case, we're calling it loaded. We're going to use this to control it and only add the marker once. So it's false initially when the location change is triggered. Say, if we haven't already loaded a marker, then we're going to run the code that does that. Close that off. And remember to set that flag to true so that we don't load any marks again. Okay, so let's think about adding some more points. So let's go back to the ones, the coordinates we might be able to take from Google Maps. Let's reset uh, our starting location to zero, 00. So just for this example, all the points you're going to see will be relative to that location. So we can just subtract it off and get the offsets. So as we come back in, we've just modified this code. So for the first marker, we can see those offsets have been added on to the latitude and longitude and just changed the size down to five. So how could we add a second marker? Well, in this simple case, we could just copy and paste the same code, just add twos just to make different variable names. It's not the most efficient way, but this is the simplest and quickest way to do it. So to see that in effect, we hold up our device, we pan around, and then we see our two markers floating in 3D space.